everyone, it's Whitney. Welcome to part two of the King Bedroom Makeover series. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make some pillow sham covers for decorative pillows like this, and then for big ones like this. This is a huge one. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways on how to use some recycled materials and make yourself some nice decorative pillows for your bed. So if you missed the first video, I'm gonna link that up in the eye and down below. I added some chair rail to the king bedroom for some nice detail. And then the next video I'm gonna post is going to be how to make a luxurious and cozy bed. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Whitney and I help you DIY a cozy home. I post videos on DIY thrift flips, home project renovations, home product review. So if you like videos like this, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing I would love to have you here. All right, let's get to making some pillow covers, sham covers, pillowcases, whatever you call these things. The pillow inserts I ordered from Amazon arrived. Let's open it up and see what they look like. This is the Sensorpedic. There were three that I was looking at. The Sensorpedic, there was Edao and Utopia. Um, but I got the Sensorpedic and I will tell you why in just a second. These are 28 by 28. The pillowcases we're gonna be making are gonna be 26 by 26. So if you're making your own pillowcases, make sure you get a pillow that's one step larger than the pillowcases you're making. That way the pillowcase will be like totally like filled out and it won't be, you know, kind of sad looking. So these do have a really nice pinstripe on them. They are just polyester fiber fill inside. Now the reason I chose these, the Sensorpedic ones, over the Edao or Utopia is because I knew it kind of seemed like there would be enough slack in order to give it a nice chop at the top. The other ones um, looked like they were going to be like really stuffed. For materials, get creative, use what you have on hand, buy at the thrift store, you don't need to buy new. This is a quilt that I'm going to be using, I got it at the thrift store. Uh, there's a few stains on it that I can't get out, so we're going to be cutting the areas that don't have any stains and using that. You can also use a drop cloth like this. You can pick up these little towels at Sam's Club. There's a, you can get a pack of 12 of these for I think like three bucks. I'm not sure if this is technically cheesecloth or if it's a like a cleaning rug, but they are quite large. And you can also use an old sheet. I'm gonna be using this for the backing on a couple of these pillows. So let's get started. All right, so I got my fabric cut out. My pillows are 28 by 28. I want my finished product to be 26 by 26. So I cut my fabric to be 27 by 27. So that gives me a half an inch seam allowance all around the entire thing. All right, so we are going to put our zipper in. I'm gonna be using just a regular basic 24 inch polyester zipper. It's not an invisible zipper, it's just a regular one. So I have my two pieces. These are right sides together. Now I'm gonna flip down the one side. So this is the right side. I'm gonna take my zipper, have it zipper side down. I'm gonna take this over to my machine, put a zipper foot on, I'm gonna be sewing right here along these teeth. Now on older machines like this, this is an old Singer, it doesn't have a back tack option. So what you would do is sew a few stitches and then lift up your foot, bring the fabric back and sew a few more stitches. I'll show you. So you would just, Turn the machine on, this is gonna be loud. So sew like three stitches, and then lift your foot up, bring it back, put the needle down, and then you're gonna sew right over those stitches again. All right, so we just sewed our zipper onto the front side of the one panel, and now we have to attach it to the back side. So what I like to do is just go ahead, unzip the zipper, and then line this up. Make sure the edges of your fabric are lined up. Line up the zipper tape, pin it down, and then sew it on down. All right, so we just sewed this part right here. Now, if we flip it over, zip it up, hey, hey! Both sides are connected. So all we gotta do is just sew around the outsides and we're done. Here, 
about two inches in, we're gonna make sure this is sewn and then just all the way around. So let's sew it all together. Editing went here. I forgot to tell you at this stage when you're sewing it together, make sure you have right sides together. But before you sew it together, open your zipper just a little bit so you can get your hand in there and fully unzip that zipper to turn it right sides out again. Because if you don't have that zipper open and you sew it together, you're not gonna be able to flip it right sides out. So make sure you do that. Don't forget. All right, back to the video. Now we're going to clip our corners. You're not going to want to cut through the threads. Just kind of like snip out the corners. That will help this corner be nice and crisp. So this is why it's important to make sure your zipper is open a little bit. Put your hand in there and open the zipper all the way and we're going to turn it right side out. Push your corners out so they are nice and kind of pointy. And the same thing with the corners by the zipper. Make sure those are nice and crisp. Now if you want this to be like super profesh, before you turn it inside out, you could uh, press all of your seam allowances open and that would make all of the edges really, really nice, but we're not gonna worry about that. Bada bing, our zipper is in there. Let's put a pillow inside and see how it looks. I kind of fold it. A little bit. Make sure the corners of the pillow are in the corners of our cover. Voila! Right, karate chop. Right, so for this next one, this is going to be super, super duper easy. This is going to be an envelope pillowcase. So what you're going to do is we're not going to have a seam in the middle. We're just using the one piece of fabric for the front and the back. So what you're going to want to do is hem the sides. Since I'm using a drop cloth, I'm just going to keep the hem that was already on the drop cloth on the one side. So on the other side, we're just going to recreate that hem. So what we're going to do, fold it over half an inch, sew it down, fold it over again a half an inch, and sew that down. Easy peasy. So for sizing, I want my pillow to be 20 by 20, so I cut the length to 21, so I have a half inch seam allowance, and then I cut it to 45, because I want 20 for the front, 20 for the back, and then five inches extra that'll count for my hem and a little bit of overlap on the envelope part. So let's just hem this side down. We can, we can iron it down to help us out. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna make a little half an inch seam allowance. Iron that baby down. So from here, you can make a stitch, fold it over again, make another stitch. So I'm going to do it the quick way and not do a stitch here. I'm just gonna fold it over, pin it down, and then we'll just have to do one stitch. If you wanted to match this side, this is the side that was already done for us. There's a stitch right here along the hem edge, and then there's a stitch up here along the top edge. So you can match it, or you could you could do it this way. You could just do do one. It's up to you. It's your pillow. So that's one stitch. I am going to do an edge stitch so it matches the kind of stock hem that was on the other side. Both ends are hemmed. What we are going to do is this is the right side. So we're going to flop over our one side we just hemmed, flop over the other side, and then just kind of finagle it until it is your length. So I decided on 20 inches. We got to bring this back a little bit. 20, 20, and come in a little bit. 20, perfect. Right now I'm just gonna pin it, we're gonna sew here and here, and we're done. Right now I'm just gonna sew this at a half an inch seam allowance. Flip our corners. Flip it right side out. Okay, let's find a pillow to put in here. Here's the drop cloth pillowcase we just made. We made this to the dimensions of 20 by 20. This is a pillow that is 22 by 22. So by going one set bigger, again, it's going to fill out your pillowcase so much better. So a few things to note, my overlap right here is only about two inches and I think it would look better if there was more of an overlap. So I only added five inches extra to my length to account for seam allowance and the overlap. 
If you're gonna be recreating this, I would add quite a bit more, but by having more of an overlap, it'll make sure this flap kind of stays taut. I'll show you once the pillow is inside. And secondly, I didn't mention how to finish your inside seams. Now, if you have an overlock or a serger machine, you can overlock these seams and that would be perfect. It'll stop them from fraying. If you don't, you can do a zigzag stitch or if you don't wanna do a zigzag stitch, you can pink these. But I just wanna show you what this looks like with a pillow inside. Make sure your corners are in the corners. So this looks really good from the front. I love how it looks but let's take a look at the overlap. So since my overlap is pretty, like not that substantial, and this pillow is bigger than the actual size of the pillowcase we just made, this is wanting to pop open a little bit. So make your overlap, make this part come down farther, like at a good extra like four inches, and that would help make this seem really taut and it won't wanna kind of pop open like this. So just learn from my, mistake so this doesn't happen just make sure that this overlaps a little bit more and you won't have this problem all right guys i will see you on the next one bye